for anyone interested in anything tactical ever, NVG are undeniably cool. And I think we all know why. But unless you're in the Taliban, you better bring money. Lots of money. Even people with the Scar H budget balk at the cost of playing the low light game. A decent military style PVS 14 monocular, one eye only, costs $2,500 to $5,000 at the time of filming. Dual tubes are usually about $5,000 to $10,000. Yes, you can go a bit cheaper if you make sacrifices, but still, bring money. So anything that will scratch the low light itch on a budget is very tempting. The age of Amazon Prime leads one to believe that we deserve low light tech and an affordable platform with free express shipping. Enter the Psionics Aurora, which starts around 500 bucks. My biggest disappointment when I finally got night vision stuff is not getting the <coughs> sound like on video games. As a consolation prize, the Psionics does make lightsaber noises. So I guess that's the we have night vision at home. In the quest to have low light technology on a budget, some guys have even gone so far as to adapt dual psionics auroras onto helmet bridge mounts, thus getting a semblance of dual tube performance for less than two grand. For casual users and civilians on a budget, the aurora has become a favored digital unit. Is digital night vision just as good? I would say that the aurora is better than nothing. Compared to the Aurora, intensifier tube technology is still definitely the king. But towards the end of this video, we'll consider the future of seeing in the dark. Let's cover some basics about how night vision works. Intensifier tubes are made from very complicated lab-grown crystals that amplify light when electrical current is applied. These tubes are inside the popular night vision that you've probably seen in pop culture, in movies, seen military operators like Navy SEALs, right etc., wear intensifier tube night vision devices. In contrast, digital night vision uses a camera sensor with the infrared filter removed, along with a software system that is optimized for oh, low light performance. Thermal devices like FLIR, forward-looking infrared, are different than night vision devices BIR2. in that they detect temperature differences like the alien on the movie Predator. Thermal imaging can be very useful for hunting animals in the dark and spotting would-be intruders. But thermal is still not the best for helmet-mounted land navigation. For the comparison between digital and intensifier tubes, we won't be considering thermal devices like FLIR. For real though, I am working on getting my hands on a thermal scope, so stay tuned and be patient with me. While it's true that thermal sensing devices can, quote, see in absolute darkness, so long as there's temperature variation, both digital and intensifier tube night vision systems both need a tiny amount of light to resolve an image. For example, if you tried to use nods in a deep cave far underground, you wouldn't be able to see anything. That's because there's no ambient light to amplify. Night vision works by amplifying the tiny amount of light available so that we can see it. Absolutely zero light means there's nothing to amplify. But the more you amplify, the dirtier the signal gets. Another useful feature of night vision is that they can also sense some infrared light. Sensing IR light means that you can use IR lasers, flashlights, and other devices that shine brightly to anyone wearing night vision but are invisible to the naked eye. Modern intensifier tubes function reasonably well with a small amount of starlight even if it's diffused through clouds. The most important thing to know about the Aurora is that it needs more ambient light to function than analog tubes. That's because the Psionix Aurora's sensor is just not as sensitive as modern intensifier tubes. Some other YouTube channels you might have seen show the Psionix Aurora looking really, really good in terms of low light performance, but there's a catch. The Aurora looks good when it's filming in open country under a good moon or near a city with ambient light. The problem with the Aurora is that its performance falls off a steep cliff when the moon isn't very bright or there aren't any city lights around. Analog night vision absolutely destroys the Aurora in truly dark nighttime conditions. It's true that the Aurora's low light performance is better than the naked eye, but it's nowhere just as good 
as real night vision. Hopefully, Psyonix's new Opsin device solves these shortcomings of digital, and I'm excited to try it at some point in the future. Because digital night vision like the Aurora needs more ambient light to work right, you'll often be relying very heavily on artificial light sources in the infrared spectrum. IR light is invisible to humans and animals, but can easily be seen by anyone else with night fighting capability. If your goal is night observation when nobody else has NVG, then a digital unit like the Psyonix might be a good value. You can see them, but they can't see you. But if someone else in your area has even a basic night fighting capability, they'll pick up your IR signature from a literal mile away. Interestingly, the weakness of digital yeah, is IR also laser. a use case. Perhaps you can't afford intensifier <laughs> tubes, but you need a way to observe others using IR devices. With a basic Psyonix Aurora, you could hide in the shadows and effectively scan for IR activity. You'd also be doing much better than anyone with no night vision at all. And in situations where the moon is over 75% illumination, you'd have absolutely excellent visibility. Some very high-end digital cameras are making huge improvements in their light sensitivity, but they're still less sensitive than analog intensifier tubes as of now. Even with analog tubes, you'll find yourself frequently using active IR light to identify concealed targets at distance. But with intensifier tubes, you won't need continuous IR light just to move around like you would with the digital Psyonix Aurora. At some point soon, I expect digital performance to surpass the analog, or at least get very close. While I haven't tried the Opsin yet, there's a chance that the Opsin may truly be able to compete with real night vision. The promise of a cheap, reliable, high-performance night vision device that's digital and has fast shipping and wide availability is just too much to ignore. In the quest for this mythical, cheap and effective and reliable night vision, people are pressing the Psyonix Aurora into a role that it was never really intended to fill. As a low light camera, the Psyonix Aurora is pretty cool for the price point. Even as a low light observation monocular for the price, it's actually pretty good. I'm afraid though, that many of the YouTube channels and other outlets that promote the Aurora tend to overstate its capability, especially when compared to what I would call real night vision, and that would be military-style PVS-14s, maybe dual tubes, anything with Gen 2 or Gen 3 intensifier tubes is just going to absolutely totally outperform anything that the Aurora can do. That said, I wouldn't go so far as to say that the Aurora is useless. It does get you into the night vision game, and it does give you low light observation capability. And perhaps most importantly of all, the Psyonix Aurora is an entry point of digital units getting into the market and becoming popular with the general public. More members of the public buying night vision or buying night vision devices will encourage further innovation and improvement in digital technology, and this is going to be good for everyone. So what's the future of night vision? To be honest, the future of night vision looks pretty awesome, so long as you have a lot of money. Let's get into it. Over the last year, I've started to see some fourth generation analog units come onto the market. These Gen 4 units promise even better light sensitivity along with higher resolution too. Based on the filmless white phosphor pinnacle tubes I've tested out, I can only imagine what a proper Gen 4 tube would do. Higher performance, lighter weight, analog technology seems to still be advancing. That said, digital units might find that they're finally on the cusp of making good on their earlier promises with the arrival of the new Psyonix Opsin digital monocular. At the time of this filming, I haven't yet tried the Opsin, but it seems plausible that for its $2,500 sticker price, they'd make it meet or beat comparable analog PVS-14 offerings. Other than lack of low light sensitivity, the biggest problem that we've had so far with digital units is that some people report that there's a lagging refresh rate. 
What this means is that you move around quickly in a darker environment. The environment that you see is somewhat delayed compared to real life. Analog tubes, so intensifier tubes, work nearly as fast as the speed of light, so lag isn't a problem. However, digital units use a microcomputer processor to render images and display them on a screen. This computer process results in some lag. Also, digital cameras work on frame rate and image exposure time. The darker it is, the longer the camera needs to expose the image in order to resolve it. Lower light means a longer exposure is needed. This means that in very dark environment, the longer exposure needed by digital units can make the lag even worse. Improved light sensitivity, more lag. There's a few ways to mitigate this, but you can never completely solve it. More powerful camera sensors, better computer chips, those can mitigate the lag, but it's never gonna go away entirely. In the future, it's very possible that digital night vision lag might get so low that it's absolutely a non-issue, but there's still gonna be a tiny bit. Digital night vision size, weight, and packaging. One of the most exciting things that you could do with digital technology brings us to a potential significant advantage that future computerized digital NVG can have. Both the Aurora and the Opsin, as well as analog units, are both long tubes that hang off the front of a head mount in front of your face. While modern analog tubes seem light at around one US pound, the weight starts to seem heavy when it's dangling off of a helmet and you're wearing it for several hours. Getting in and out of vehicles and trucks, navigating around in enclosed spaces, there have been more than once where I have snagged my nods on objects or things in the environment. Another problem is the very limited field of view. NVGs normally have a 40 degree field of view, some have up to 50, if you spend $40,000, you could get a set of quad nods and get closer to a panoramic field of view. But those are just gonna get a lot heavier. Field of view is always going to be an issue when you're talking about night vision. With traditional nods, most of these design constraints really can't be easily avoided because light travels through tubes in a line. So you're left with these long toilet paper tubes hanging off your face. But it, with digital technology, these constraints just don't apply. Just look at a cell phone. It has a camera on one side and a very large display on the other, and it's less than half an inch thick. I mean, they're very, very thin. So with digital technology, you could move around the digital processors, you could move around your light sensors, and do all of these things, and you could even place them on different parts of the user's body. For instance, you could move the batteries and the processors and all that kind of stuff to the back of a helmet, or even onto the torso of the user. Being able to play with this size and weight and moving that weight around, you could actually balance out the weight a lot better and improve functionality and comfort with digital that you just would never have the opportunity to do with an analog unit. After wearing dual tube night vision several hours at a time with a ballistic helmet, a pound of weight hanging off the front of your head takes its toll on your neck after several hours. So the only thing with a digital unit that you'd really need in line with the wearer's eye are the camera sensors and the display. Because of this, I can imagine, and I'm not the only one, a future where the wearer has thin glasses with a panoramic augmented reality display that gives the wearer Gen 3 or better low light performance without the downsides of analog tubes. There's more to operating in the dark than simple low light performance. And here, digital units may also have an advantage in the future. Digital devices open the door to displaying additional info to the wearer that may be useful. Information like time, navigation instructions, operational data, and even thermal body heat signatures could all be incorporated into a digital display with the right auxiliary sensors and data attached. Devices like the Infrared Jerry C and the much more expensive eCody provide some of this functionality to analog units, but at a significant additional cost, and even worse than cost, is extra weight. 
Night vision, thermal imaging, and digital technology are many things at once. They're exciting, they're expensive, and terrifying if you're on the wrong side of them. Given enough time, my guess is that digital yeah. will eventually own the night, truly. Nonetheless, my current go-to is a set of dual-tube Gen 3 white phosphor nods. While the Psionics Aurora can't compete with units costing 10x the price, it's a very interesting way to dip your toe in the water of seeing stuff at night. While I haven't tried out the Opsin yet, I'm very excited to get one and figure out how well it performs compared to military-style PBS-14 binoculars and other intensifier tube units. If you take things like being ready and self-reliance seriously, you should probably make plans in the budget to get some sort of low-light device in the future if you don't have one already. Maybe even consider an entry-level thermal handheld unit or a single PVS-14, and that would get you a long way. If money is really tight, consider selling a spare pistol and getting a used Aurora. But seriously, consider saving for a basic PVS-14, and you'll probably be a lot happier in the long run. Whatever you do, just get something to get into the night vision game when you can afford it, and build from there.